In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural grippy metal material. Now, I had the idea to create this material because I was working out and I was using some workout equipment and some dumbbells, and on the handles, they have this cool grippy metal so you can grip the metal better. And also, a little while back, I actually made a dumbbell weights tutorial, so if you'd like to check out that video, I'll have the link in the description. But in this tutorial, we'll be creating this grippy metal material that you can add to different objects, and after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join the material together into this custom nude group. So we first have the overall scale to change the size of the entire material, and then we also have this base color here, so you can just change the color of the metal, make it lighter or darker, and then we also have this grip scale, so you can change the scale of that grip texture. Then we have the grip sharpness, so if I just zoom in here and then change the grip sharpness, you can see if I turn it up, you can see the grippy parts are going to be sharper and kind of come out more. And then we also have the squares size, so I can make those squares really small or make them quite big. Then we also have the noise scale, which is just that little subtle noise on the metal. And then we also have the noise detail and the noise roughness. And then we also just have this roughness value to change the shininess of the metal. And then we have the grip bump strength if you want to have that grip pop out more. And then we also just have the noise bump strength if you want to make that metal look like it's a bit more worn out. And if you'd like to purchase this material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. And to purchase all of my procedural materials, definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. So once you set up my Ultimate Material Pack in Blender's asset browser, you can just drag and drop all the materials into your 3D scenes. You can also purchase all of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, definitely check out my Blender Procedural procedural material tutorial playlist. The links are all in the description. So real quick, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I just added an icosphere and then right behind me if you click on the little add icosphere settings, I turned the subdivisions up to 6 so it is nice and smooth and then using the object context menu I shaded the object smooth. Then I also wanted to add this to a cylinder object so you can see what it looks like on a metal bar. So I added a cylinder object and I went into edit mode and I scaled the cylinder up on the Z axis a bit. And then I also added some loop cuts by pressing control R. I added a loop cut here and a loop cut down here. And then I also went here to the face select. I select this face. I hit the I key to inset the face. And then also down here, hit the I key to inset the face. And then I went back to object mode. And then we can also use the object context menu and shade that smooth. So now you can see we can shade it smooth and the edges are smooth there because of those loop cuts. And then also I pressed control one to add a subdivision surface modifier with one level. And again, you can see by adding the loop cuts there, it makes the edges sharp. And also I would add a few more loop cuts just to make that a little bit sharper there on the top and bottom. So then in object mode, I move these objects over and I also wanted to scale them down to a better size. So I scaled them down to like a 0.3 and then I pressed control A and just applied the scale. And and this object here, I'll scale it down even more, press control A and apply the scale, and I'll just put these in the center of the scene. And then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the objects. Now for the lighting, I added these two different area lights right here. So if you go to the add menu, you can go down here to light and add an area light. And so this first one here, I put it kind of on the back to give a rim light and I set the power to 10. And I also changed the shape to rectangle and I made it longer. So if I go into the rendered view, just to kind of see how that's looking, it is kind of subtle. It's hard to see here in this shot, but there is a subtle rim light in the back of those objects. And you'll be able to see it better when the objects are more shiny. And then I also added another light here. This one I set the power to 30 and I just left it at a square and just kind of pointed it down to give some nice bright lighting on the objects. Now also to get some nice realistic lighting reflections, if you go over here to the world properties, I added in this Machine Shop 02 HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. Link is in the description if you'd like to download it. And I downloaded the 1K HDR version of this HDRI. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot next to color you can choose environment texture and then you can click on the open button and open up the HDRI and I also just set the power to 0.8 so it's a little bit 
less bright. Now also, if you go over here to the render properties, I am using the Cycles rendering engine, but you could definitely use Eevee if you want to, but I'm going for realism, so I'll use Cycles. And then also if you open up the Film tab here, you can choose the Transparent button if you want to set the background to transparent so that the background isn't quite as distracting. And then also if you open up the Color Management, I'm going to use the View Transform of Filmic and the Look to Very High Contrast to pop out the colors and make everything more contrasty and saturated. So I'm in the Shading Workspace so I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered mode just so I can preview the material and right over here I have the shader editor so I'll just click on new to add a new material and I can just rename this to grippy metal and then also I can click and drag right here and I can drop the material onto this object as well or just add that material so they both have the same material and then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on in the video to preview the different nodes so if you don't have the node wrangler enabled you can click on edit you can go to the preferences and then over here in the add-ons tab, if you go to the search, you can search for Node Wrangler and just checkmark the Node Wrangler add-on. So the add-on is built into Blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So we can just close Blender's user preferences. So let's now start by creating the material. So I'll go to the add menu and for the base texture, I'm going to search for a brick texture. And then let's also control shift and select the bricks texture just to preview it. Now before we change the settings of the brick texture, you can see it's not placed on the objects very well. And so I'm going to do a few things to fix that. So I'm going to select the brick texture and I'm going to press control T. That is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now usually with procedural materials, I like to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates place the texture on the object more evenly. However, for this brick texture, the object coordinates really isn't going to work that well because it'll only work well on one face, but then the other faces you can see it'll be stretched. So I'm instead going to be using the UVs of the object and then we'll be UV unwrapping the object so that you can actually see the texture really well on all the objects. So this icosphere that we added on default is already pretty well UV unwrapped. You can kind of see the texture all over, but this object here, I do want to UV unwrap this. So I'm just going to go back to solid view and then I will go into edit mode. So I'm now going to add some seams to the object. So I'll click here to go to the vertex select. I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that loop right there on the end. And then I'll go down here to the bottom and I'll shift alt select that loop right there. And then I can just find one of these spots. So I'm actually going to do it on the back so you can't see the seam and I'll hold down the shift key and I'll select that one and that one to so those vertices and then also hold down the shift key and select those two. So basically we have a cut around the bottom, then we have a cut going up, and then we have a cut around the top. So we can cut out the mesh and open it up and that'll be a great way to UV unwrap it. So right now because we have all those selected, we can hit the U button and we can click on mark seam. So now you can see that those spots are red because they have seams. And then if you select everything again, you can hit U and let's just click on unwrap. Now real quick, I'm going to show you the UV unwrap. So if I go back to previous, real quick, I'm going to go here to the UV editing workspace and you can see this is how it's looking. So the bottom and the top and also all of the edges are all opened up. So that is going to be a nice UV unwrap. Let's go back to the shading and I can go into the rendered viewport mode just to see how that is looking. And so now we can change some of the brick texture settings. So the scale here, I'm going to turn this to 60 so there are a lot more of them. And then I want to make color 1 and color 2 the same color. So I'm just going to click and drag and I'm going to drop color 1 onto color 2. And then the mortar here I'll leave to black. Now right here on the mortar size, I want to make this bigger, so I'll turn it to like a 0.3, so it is bigger. But then this mortar smoothness value, if I click here to make it bigger, I'll turn the mortar smoothness to like a 1, so you can see that better. And then this brick width and row height, I want them to be the same. So I'll turn this bottom one here to a 0.5 so that the row height is 0.5. So if I zoom in here, you can see they're all the same size. And then also this offset here, I don't want any offset. So I'll turn the offset to 1. So now it's kind of just like this checker texture. Now I want to make this more contrasty. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a color ramp. And we'll put the color ramp here after the brick texture. Now if we drag the white tab or the black tab together, that is going to make it more contrasty. So we'll be using this in a moment, but I first want to show you what it's actually going to do. So I want to put this into the bump so that it actually makes the texture look bumpy. So we can take the color ramp color and let's put that into the normal. And then I can control shift and select the principal shader. Now you can see there's some weird shading issues and that's because we 
we need to convert the color ramp data into normal data. So we'll go to the add menu and we're going to search for the bump node and let's put it here between the color ramp and the principal shader. And we want the color ramp color to be going into the height value and that way it'll convert it to bump data. So you can see it looks very bumpy now. So now I can change the color ramp and show you what it does. So you can see by dragging the color ramp, it's going to make it more contrasty. And so we can actually control how that's going to look. So I'm going to drag this white tab over here to kind of flatten the top parts. And then I'll drag this black tab over here to kind of make the squares smaller. So that is looking quite nice. And then also I want to change a few more settings. So I want to make it metallic. So we'll turn the metallic value to one. So it looks like metal. And then also here on the base color, let's just kind of make this a light gray color. So something like that. And also this roughness value for now, I'm just going to turn it way down. So it's a bit more shiny so that you can see it better and it looks more like metal. So that is definitely looking like metal now because it is shiny. Now there is a problem with this and that is that the squares are not diagonal. So to fix this, we're going to go back to the mapping and we're just going to rotate the texture. So here on this mapping, I'm going to take the Z value and I'm going to rotate it. So I'm actually going to type in 45 to rotate it by 45 degrees. And now you can see that it's actually rotated over. And so it kind of looks like that grippy metal on some workout equipment. So now I also just want to add some overall noise to the texture because if I zoom way in you can see it's quite shiny and it doesn't really look very realistic because it's kind of too perfect. So I want to add a bit of noise to the texture. So I'll go to the add menu. We're going to search for a noise texture and let's put this here underneath the brick texture and then we can take the texture coordinate and we actually want to use the object coordinates. So we'll put the object into the vector of the noise texture and then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And also later on in the video I'm going to want to change change the overall scale of the noise. So let's take this mapping, I'll press shift to duplicate it and we can drop it down here. But then this Z value, we can just turn that back to zero because we don't need to rotate it. So now let's change some of the noise texture settings. So I'll turn the scale to like a 60 and let's turn the detail to 15. So it's very detailed and the roughness, I'll turn that up to like a 0.7. So it's nice and detailed. So now I want to put this noise texture into the bump as well. So to add it in, we can duplicate this bump node with shift D and drop it here. And the normal can actually go into the normal. So this way we now have this height value that we can add data into. And that way we can mix multiple bump maps together. So let's put the factor into the height value and then I can control shift and select the principled shader. Now it's way too strong right now. So this first bump strength, which is controlling the noise, let's turn that down to like a 0.1. So now if I zoom in really closely, you can see there's some subtle bump there. And then also this bump is a bit too strong as well. So I'm going to turn this way down to like a 0.25. So it is less strong and that is looking much, much better. Now I also want a little bit of variation in the roughness so that some parts are more rough and other parts are more shiny. So let's take the noise texture factor and I can put that into the roughness. Now I want to control that better because it's actually a bit too rough right now. So we'll select the color ramp. We'll press shift D to duplicate it and we can drop it here after this roughness. So after the noise, but before the roughness value. And let's just drag this out so that we have a bit more space. And then with the color ramp selected, I can hit the backspace to reset the color ramp. Now, if I make the color ramp values lighter, it'll be more rough. Or if I make the color ramp colors darker, that's going to make it more shiny. So I just want to have these both be kind of like a mid gray color. So this color here, I'm going to make it kind of like a light gray, something like that. But then this white color here, I'm going to make this one kind of like a dark gray. And if you want to use the same hex values that I'm using to get the same color, then on this first one here, you can go to the hex value and you can punch in A9, A9, A9. And then here on the second one, this one is slightly darker just to give it a bit of variation. This one is going to be 949494. Now later on in the custom node group, I want to be able to control the roughness values. So we can just make the values lighter or darker to control the roughness. So to do this, we're going to go to the add menu and we're going to search for the hue saturation value. And let's put this here after the color ramp, but before the roughness. So now this value here will make the entire thing lighter or darker. And so that can control the roughness. All right, and that is it for the procedural material. So I'll now show you how to join it together into a custom node group. So I'm going to click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output. And I'll press control G. Control G will join it together into a node group. And I can hit the tab key with the node group selected to go in and out of the node group. So let's drag the group input right over here and I can drag it out to make it bigger. And then I can also give it the same name. So I'm going to call it grippy metal. 
So now it's called Grippy Metal, and then I'll hit Tab to go into the Node group. I can hit the N key to open the side panel, and I can double click on the interface here. If you go to the Group tab, double click on the interface, and I'm going to rename this to Shader. So now if I go outside of the Node group, you can see it's just called Shader, and I like that a bit better. So let's go back into the Node group. So if we go over here to the left side, we have this group input, and we can plug values up to the group input, and then we can control those values outside of the node group. So the first values that I want to control is the overall size of the material, and both of these mapping nodes are controlling the scale. So I want to put this scale value here into the extra socket here on the group input, and then this mapping here, I want to put the scale value into the same exact socket. And this way, this one single value will control both of the scale values. Now if you click on the scale here, you can see it's three values, but I just want it to be one value. So on the type here, let's change it to float so it is one value, and then on the default value here, we'll turn that to to one and then you still can't see the texture that's because we need to go outside of the node group and we need to turn the scale back to one all right so let's go back into the node group now i'm also going to drag the group input way over here and we have this base color here so i'll put the base color into the extra socket so we can control that and then i also want to control the grip scale so if we drag this back over here to the brick texture the brick texture has a scale value so that'll just control the grip so we'll put the scale into the extra socket here i can click on this and rename it to grip scale there on the side panel and then I want to control the sharpness of the grip so if I zoom way in here so you can kind of see that better this mortar size here I can make it bigger or smaller to make that bigger so let's take the mortar size and we'll put that into the extra socket and I'm going to rename this one to grip sharpness now we can also use this mortar smooth value to change the size of those bricks or in this case it's going to be the grips so I'll take the mortar smooth and put that into the extra socket and I'll rename this to square size then I want to control some of the noise settings, so I'll drag this down here, and let's put the scale into the extra socket, and also the detail into the extra socket, and the roughness into the extra socket. And then I'm going to double click on these and just add the word noise to them, so noise scale, and noise detail, also noise roughness, just so we have more control over that. And then I want to control the roughness of the material, so we'll drag the group input back up here, and this hue saturation value will make it lighter or darker, so that'll control the roughness. So I'll put the value into the extra socket, double click on this, and I'll rename it to roughness. And then I finally want to be able to control the bump strength, so let's drag this group input down here. So this first one here, this bump strength is going to change the noise, so we'll put the strength into the extra socket double click on this and I can rename it to noise bump strength and then this one here that is going to change the bump strength of the grip so I'll put the strength into the extra socket and I can rename this to grip bump strength all right let's drag the group input way back over here I can hit the tab key to go outside of the node group and hit the N key to close the side panel. Let me just zoom out here and we can now review the final material. So we have the overall size of the material and then we also have the base color so you can make whatever metal color you want. We also have the grip scale. We also have the grip sharpness and actually if you turn the grip sharpness up a lot that actually looks pretty cool. That's kind of like a, a variation of the grippy metal. And then we also have the square size so that's pretty cool as well. We also have some noise settings, so the noise scale and the detail and roughness. And then we also have the roughness of the material to make it more shiny or make it more rough. And then we have the noise bump strength if you want to make it look really worn and old. And then also the grip bump strength. So that's going to be it for this tutorial, so I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase this material and help support the channel, you can get this material on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And to purchase all of my materials, definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set out for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. You can also purchase all of my materials individually on my Gumroad store, and if you'd like to purchase packs of just 10 materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, definitely check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. All the links are in the description. But I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you found it helpful, and thank you for watching.